All right, what's up everybody? Let me explain what's happening here. So as you guys know, I did two videos where I interviewed random players in the game in Battlefield 2042, and I asked them basically their thoughts on how the game was going, what they liked about it, what they don't like about it, rating out of 10, etc. I've been trying to do a third one uh, because I think it's interesting. A lot of people think it's interesting to know what the players think, but I've run into a lot of problems namely that no one wants to talk to me anymore <laughs> I, I don't know why but i can't find anybody who's willing to get on the mic i i assume it's probably because they feel like they don't make a difference in this game and uh, i'll get to more on that later other than that i'm not really sure why people aren't talking anymore you know maybe, maybe they saw my video and they know that I'm going to ask them a bunch of questions and they don't want to be in a video. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, either way, I got I got only one person to talk to me over the last couple months uh, since that second video has been out. And uh, I, I, I may have accidentally deleted that file. So uh, so that's gone. And, uh, you know, it was only one anyway. So not enough for me to want to put it in the video. So I thought why don't I just interview myself instead? Because a lot of people ask me to elaborate on my views in the comments and I have not put out a comprehensive video about my thoughts on the game. And I don't want people to be confused because in my interview videos, I don't really say my point of view. I'm just really looking to understand what people think and I'm not trying to argue with them or, dis or discuss with them to any deep kind of level. So I, I thought maybe people don't really know what I think about the game. Do I even know what I think about the game? The game has changed a lot and without caring if anyone actually cares what I think, I will now be a narcissist and ask myself, all the same questions that I would ask people in my interview videos. So here we go. The number one thing I normally start with is some variation of, are you having fun? How are you liking the game so far? And my answer to that would be, I am having fun. Like 50% of the time. This game has a lot of potential to be fun if, if everything lines up properly. This game also has a lot of potential to be really not fun. And that, I think, comes down to the maps are not conducive to uh, infantry to infantry battle. They're really much more conducive to vehicle uh, battle, specifically air vehicles. They really, like, if you're a good pilot, there's, you know, infantry can't really do anything against you uh, unless they get a lucky M5 recoilless shot or shoot you out. But anyway, the, the flow of the maps, it's really in Conquest, it's, it's, you can just get stuck in a cycle of being killed from, from random angles the entire game. It's happened to me a million times where you're spawning in, you walk a few feet, maybe you kill one person and you get shot in the back of the head because someone spawned behind you. Um, the spawns are very, very bad. So it can be really not fun, but I do have fun. When, when everyone plays, you know, quote, the right way, it can be fun. When everyone's fighting on objectives, you know, when everyone's going for objectives, uh, it's fun because then the, the fighting can be concentrated. The space in between is limited. If you have a squad that's on the objective, you're spawning on them. Uh, someone has a spawn beacon. You know, the enemies are doing the exact same thing, which means you spawn in right into the fight. You're hopefully accomplishing things. Then it can be very fun. The, the difficult part for me in this game is remembering to not care about the outcome of the game like if, if there's no way to guarantee that i can win then i just don't see the purpose of me playing and i feel like with 128 players and with the game mechanics the way that they are there's just no way that even if i play the best game of my entire life and get 100 kills and I capture every objective, I can only be on one objective at a time. As soon as I leave the objective I captured, it may just go right back into the enemy hands. So even if I'm playing absolutely perfect, there's no way to guarantee that it'll actually affect the game in any way. That's always been the case with Battlefield to some degree. Now it's exaggerated to the point where, like, it, like in older Battlefields, you used to have, especially in Battlefield 4 where the maps were more linear, and you had, to, you had a more defined front line, you used to be able to make an impact by getting a lot of kills and allowing your teammates to push through or, or pushing through yourself and getting a bunch of kills but then dying, but you still open up 
the pathway for the rest of your team. There were ways to have an impact, whereas now you really feel like whether you do bad or whether you do good, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna make a difference to the outcome of the game. And you know, hey, that's if that's how the game is, then you just have to go into the game recognizing that, you know what? Let's just have some fun. Let's try to you know get some good clips. Uh, let's try to kill people in some cool ways, and just have some fun. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna worry about my kill count or my score uh, like I could in Battlefield 4. Like this is literally just me having a good time. And that's it. And as soon as I forget that, I'm get I'm gonna get frustrated because this game doesn't really allow for any sort of com competitive gameplay. At a certain point, when, when you're gaming in certain games, you're you're literally just fighting against the game itself. That you know you're gaming the system as opposed to a contest of skill between players. And I'm personally much more a fan of a contest of skill between players. You know, I'm glad they finally put a scoreboard in because that was a big, big kind of insight into how they were treating the game from the start. Look, if you don't put a scoreboard in the game, that says that your game is not about competing. It's about participation. It seems like this game's focus is really about the Battlefield, quote, experience and getting those quote battlefield moments rather than having any sort of solid gameplay like they're they are trying so hard to to lean into the aura what would you call it you know the the essence they're trying so hard to get that result uh, of those battlefield moments they're trying to force it in there in every second possible to get the most sandbox experience but they skipped the part where they put in the decent gameplay mechanics. I've been ranting about this since for a while now. It's that, it's that what I think the devs are thinking, you know, whoever is responsible for steering, steering this game into what it is, I think they're really thinking about the experience of playing the game rather than what happens while you're playing the game, if that makes sense. When I, when I spawn into an objective, right, I don't want to die because dying is bad. <laughs> this is a video game, right? This is a first person shooter. The goal is not to die. And Battlefield's not like Call of Duty, right? Where Call of Duty, as long as you trade yourself out in kills, you're doing fine. All right, that's that's all really is asked of you in Call of Duty. I'm not talking about pub stomping. I'm talking about being competitive, you know, playing the game at a competitive level. Whereas in Battlefield, the, the travel distance has normally been a little longer and you getting one kill doesn't do anything you know you getting five kills does not necessarily do anything in battlefield and it's always been the case and that's not a bad thing because the focus is supposed to be capturing objectives so because of that you know i as a battlefield player have been conditioned to avoid death at all costs even if i'm not getting kills if i'm on an objective i need to stay alive so that my teammates can spawn on me, so that I can wait for reinforcements to get there and we can capture the objective. Now this game has completely changed that mechanic and made it a lot more, I would say, run and gun. I don't know if they did this on purpose. I don't think they achieved their desired result. I think they did what they wanted to do with the game, but it, it worked out in kind of a negative way. Here's my general rule for whether or not a game is considered casual or competitive. If a game is considered competitive, you need to be able to predict where the enemy is going to be spawning and where they're going to be coming from. Not not necessarily that it's going to be obvious, but you know, through game sense, through through knowledge, through experience, if I kill someone here, they're going to spawn over here. If we start capping the objective, the enemies are going to spawn this way. And to a certain extent, you can do that in Battlefield. Like if you're on the C point, in orbital on C2, if you start capping the C point and you're killing enemies, they're gonna respawn while they still have the objective in the middle of that ocean area. They're, they're gonna spawn there and you know that, so you're gonna be pre-aiming that. And that's good because you should be able through superior game knowledge and playtime and skill gap, be able to outsmart your enemies in a competitive game. However, in Battlefield 2042, we now have twice the, the vehicles Right, so people can be parachuting from aircraft twice as much. They can be dropping out of the sky in random places. You have half the players playing Sundance who can fly across the entire map at two miles an hour, dipping and and rising to <laughs> to gain speed and altitude. And that operative 
can literally just pop in behind you with no audio cues, right? That's not competitive. And you've also got, you've also got spawn beacons, okay? Now, I'm not opposed to spawn beacons. I think spawn beacons are great. You need spawn beacons in order to cut down on the travel time. That's, that's great. But the spawn beacons in 2042 are stealth spawn beacons. They're really hard to see because they're, they're so small. You can't hear them at all. Like think about the sensor ball. Even though the sensor ball is the size of a baseball, it flashes and has a really loud pinging noise. Like I can hear that thing from a mile away and that's good. Why doesn't the spawn beacon, which has infinitely more impact on the gameplay, have a similar footprint in terms of, you know, flashing lights, beeping sounds, you know, it should be three feet taller with a huge antenna like it was in Battlefield 4. This is more important than people think. It's not about the game being like super competitive and ultra, you know, ultra try hard and blah, blah, blah. What it's about is, is being able to, to actively put effort into the way you play the game and that in turn resulting in a better outcome for your team. That is what all multiplayer games are based on. And the most competitive of those games become pro sports like Call of Duty, League of Legends, uh, Valorant, CSGO. Those are games where there's a direct correlation between what you put in and what you get out. In Battlefield 22, there is literally zero correlation between what you put in and what you get out. And I think that's a problem. This game, it's, it's not marketed as a sandbox simulator. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what the, you would classify this game as. It's, it's an experience, really, really is what it is. It's like, I would call it a Battlefield sandbox experience. It's, it's really not a game. The, the score at the end is arbitrary. You have no effect on what happens. What, what the developers, what it seems like they wanted to do was create as many explosions crashes, battle, quote, battlefield moments per square inch that they possibly could and cram it all in to give you that nostalgic, you know, battlefield experience. We saw in the trailer, they were leaning into it. You know, they showed that typical, that height of battlefield moments. You know, they're putting in these events like tornadoes and sandstorms because at the end of the day what they want you to do is experience this and think wow this is so cool this game is amazing i'm i'm like this is so fun like aren't games amazing now i think i really think that's all they want i don't think they want you to be able to get good at this game they want it to be the most casual like, like, they didn't put a scoreboard in the game, bro. There's no... The only reason they put it in is because everyone, literally everyone, was raging about it. Like, you, you should look at that and think, okay, they don't want you to care about what you're playing. You know, for me, it's one thing if they had marketed it that way, whereas if, you know, if they had said from the get-go, right, this is not, you know, a uh, first-person shooter battlefield. This is more of a battlefield experience sandbox game where it's it's more of just um, a montage, right? They want the games to be uh, a collage, a montage of battlefield moments from start to finish. And, and here's the thing, they don't necessarily want you even creating those experiences. They put things in the game to create them for you. You know, they added more uh, specialist abilities so that there would be more chaos. They want as much chaos as possible because that's what they think makes Battlefield great, right? They they want you to they want you to get killed by a super hind while a tank runs over your body and a Sundance is is flying across your your field of vision and while you're dead uh the sundance drops and assassinates the sniper on the roof where you're you're dead at and they want you to think wow that was so cool like the way i just died was so cool isn't that cool when in reality you're just like i just died for the the tenth time in five seconds from something that i could not counter even if i knew it was coming <laughs> like you're just like i i am Am I playing a game? I don't know. I'm I'm more like playing an unavoidable death simulator. They're they're kind of doing this self-serving uh, homage to their own game at this point. It, it makes me pretty frustrated. Okay, so that's so, so that's that part of it, right? I'm probably not even going to get to the glitches even without the bugs. I think there's enough to criticize this game on without even getting into it. So am I having fun? 
It's hard to believe it after I say all that, but yes I am, and at the same time, not at all. So normally I'll upload the games where I have fun, right? Because you guys don't want to see me just hate my life for 30 minutes. And I am genuinely having fun, you know? I would be playing this game whether I was posting or not. So what I just outlined is, are they are the facts of how this game plays, right? It's not really debatable in my mind. Uh, we can talk about whether or not we like the game, but you know, it's just not a competitive game. It's completely random and, you know, you can't really care about the end because you don't really have an impact. And that, those are just the facts. Now let's talk about the part where I do have fun. In, or, in order to have fun in this game, you have to play against the game itself. You can't play against the other players. There's no way for you to outsmart the other players if you don't know where they are in the first place. And you're not going to know where everyone is. So I have to, to narrow the scope of my view of success in the game to my own personal performance. And that's how I have fun. If I'm playing Valorant, if I'm playing really well, I could ace the round, right? If I play my absolute best and everything goes right, like I could ace the round and win for all of us. That's how Valorant is. It's completely, completely based on mechanics and understanding the mechanics and executing them perfectly. And if you execute all the mechanics of the game perfectly, you will win. There's no question about it. But in games like Battlefield 2042, things are gonna happen to you that there's no way to counter and there's no way you could have possibly predict it. So you have to be aware of that and then play for it, right? If you know that there's a possibility that Sundance could be behind you at any possible moment, well, you should be checking your bag. You should be checking the sky, you know, but you, at a certain point, you can only do it so much, you know, because you're checking for sun dances. You're looking for people on the ground who are actually you're supposed to be fighting. You know, there's also a tank on the hill a mile away who might be targeting you. And, you know, you could have accounted for all of that. Uh, there's also an exploding barrel right here in the corner where there's the only safe place for you to hide. So you have to go somewhere else. And and then you've also got to look for. Uh, the little bird which is circling your position, but you know what you've accounted for all of that and you've done it perfectly But a super hind comes in and blows up your entire building and shoots you through the wall and you know what there's there's nothing you can do <laughs> You know at, at a certain point There's literally nothing you can do and that's what this game is and that's what the developers wanted you to feel They wanted you to feel that just like anything else in life you have to narrow down the scope of your success into all the things you could possibly control. <laughs> right, life lessons here at Battlefield 2042. And that's what I, that's how I have fun in this game. I don't always succeed at having that attitude, just like life, you get stressed out about things you can't control, but that is what I attempt to do. And when I have fun, I am doing that. I'm not caring about what's happening. I'm just, I'm just going in. I, I'm yeah, trying to headshot as many people as I can. I'm trying to use weapons that are fun and challenging to use. I don't give a crap how many kills I get. I don't give a crap if we win or lose. So that's kind of a long explanation, but I really have to go into detail on this stuff because uh, there's, there's really a lot that goes into it. And there's a lot that I think about. You know, I've played a lot of games. I've played a lot of really good games. And I've played a lot of bad games. And I just appreciate a well-constructed game that rewards effort. You know? I don't want to... I want to be rewarded for my playtime. I don't want to be spit on by the mechanics of the game. You know? And I want to be punished when I do something wrong. I know, I know it's it's very, you know, very wordy. Hopefully you guys can make sense of that. But my arbitrary rating, not that I've arbitrarily come to it. I've, you know, as you can see, I've laid out my argument. Uh, but, you know, arbitrary in the sense that it really doesn't mean anything to anybody and really doesn't affect anything. Knowing that if you like to play this game and you think it's a 10 out of 10, that's, that's great. I could care less what anybody else thinks of it, you know? At the end of the day, it's a game, and if you like it, play it. Don't care what anybody else thinks. I'm gonna say, at this moment, this game is a 4 out of 10. I've laid out all the negatives. The only reason I'm not giving it a 1 is because it is possible to have fun and win the game is at its very best in terms of how the players are playing. It can be really good. Like what would you what would you do if someone if someone sold you a couch, right? You go to Lazy Boy, and you get a couch for five grand because couches are insanely expensive, and they're like, yeah, it's a massage couch, it's a heated couch, it's got air ventilation, it's got Bluetooth speakers, surround sound, and you get the couch home, and you put it together, and you you open the packaging, and you sit down. 
and not only does it not have Bluetooth, not only do the massage seats not work, but the heater is too hot and it's not real leather and one seat has way harder springs than the other seats and you know the leg extension handles broken off and there there's and there's cushions that are ripped and they're like yeah it's a couch and you're like well i guess it's a couch it's like it meets maybe the bare minimum requirements for being a couch but you know this is like a couch i could have gotten you know free off the street in an alley somewhere with cat pee all over it and it's 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 really not you know the couch we were promised and that's what i have to say about battlefield 2042 it's just not the couch we were promised all right so that's that's my opinion on this game that's my interview of myself you know let me know in the comments what you agree with what you disagree with you know if you're gonna write a comment please make sure you think about it with your brain before you type it out uh, because remember you are you know putting your own thoughts out into the internet where they will never go away and if they're really dumb then everyone's gonna see that that's on you um, but if you have an opinion I'd love to hear it and uh, I hope that we can continue to be a community that appreciates hearing opinions that are maybe not the same as everyone else has and and we've been super great at that so far so I expect that I'll get some pushback because a lot of people do like this game and you know what I, I consider myself to be one of those people I enjoy playing the game criticizing something for what it's bad at uh, and appreciating for what it, it for for when it's good they're not mutually exclusive ideas we can like the good and hate the bad at the same time so yeah it's pretty much all I have to say I hope I cleared up a lot of the confusion about what I think about Battlefield 2042 Anyway, join the Discord. A lot of people playing on the Discord that are really cool. So we're building the community there. So like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more. And uh, I'll see you later.